top five reasons a nine-game conference schedule is best. We talked about this a little bit with Scott Docterman, and of course the SEC meetings are going on right now, and they're discussing, you know, the three six six format or the one I don't know whatever it is one eight format, which I think would would kind of be a mistake, um, especially like this, from Texas's perspective. You've got, you know, uh, they're coming in. You know, the, they're going to probably play A and M again, but. If it's 1-8, you would think that Texas-Oklahoma outweighs Texas-Texas A&M just in if you're going to play one same one every year. So then why would the SEC, you know, cut off their nose to spite their face on that one? Well, that's two but, big marquee games for – just, just that's just one of the schools right there. Yeah, I was going to say, though, that's just one of the schools. But, like, I mean, I could do that with everybody, but I just use could. Texas at the top of my mind. Yeah. You could, yeah. I'm just saying that, like, Texas won't be the, be the make or break. Like, no. oh, we can't have both of those matchups? Well, then let's scrap the whole thing. So, yeah, it's, uh, but, it's I mean, interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, Alabama-Auburn, but then you sacrifice, you know, Alabama – uh, who's, Who? their sec- who's their secondary uh, LSU, you know, so like you sacrifice that one every year. So it, you know, you have Georgia, Florida, but you sacrifice Florida, Tennessee, you know, like, is that, is that really worth it? Because those are all, all good rivalries. So here are the top five reasons. Uh, le- number five, less games versus SCS late in the year for the SEC or probably in general, but those late year FCS games in the SEC really, really chap my hide. I mean, it's late in the year. All the games are supposed to be exciting. Yeah, but they built it up to where their conference schedule is so daunting and a, and also the way they hype it. And a lot of those games can be, you can have a battering ram, but you can do that in every conference, that they sneak those in at the end and nobody's going to say anything. Now, although we've seen more people say something now, like, oh, what about the game with Georgia Southern or whoever it might be or Tennessee Tech? They've been able to do that. And I would think the fans, the home fans, would rather those games not be played if they could play another SEC game. Yeah, I also think if you're the like a cross conference rival, you know, um, you know, if Georgia gets to play Towson in Week uh, 11 and Georgia Tech, I mean, if they were e- on equal footing, but Georgia Tech has to play, you know, North Carolina, then it kind of ticked off that, you know, I'm in a conference game and you're playing one that should have been at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. Yeah, it's kind of a gimme week that yeah. they've built up in uh, propaganda to the point where we're like, no, yeah, because it's so hard. Let them do that. And mm-hmm. if it was any other conference, we would slam them mercilessly yeah. for doing the same thing, but they get a pass. Yeah. Number four, it hasn't hurt the Big 12. It hasn't hurt the Pac-12. It hasn't hurt, uh, who else does it? The nine-game conference schedule. Pac-12, Big 10, and the Big 12. Yeah, it hasn't hurt anybody else. So just do it. I mean... What's what? I mean, I, I know they're trying to, you know, you say lose a home harder, game. But, you yeah. can lose a home game every other year, right? If you play one more conference game, you lose a home game against the teams we just mentioned that allow you to fill up your stadium with those big, massive stadiums that most of the SEC schools have one more time. That's one thing's financial. Yeah, I get that. But I, to me, it hasn't hurt. Does it really? Has it set the Big Ten back financially? No. Okay. No. Then, no. then there you go. Uh, number three, strength of schedule will likely improve unless the conference, you know, somehow falls on hard times. And Everything is cyclical. You can say that like the NBA East used to dominate. Now it could be the West and then you whatever divisions in baseball. It's all cyclical, but this one has been more than cyclical. It's been going on a long time. Yeah, it has, and it's it's kind of rigged in their favor. I mean, if, if this was a pro sports league, then there's an, a draft to help out. There's no draft. There's no collective bargaining agreement. There's no revenue sharing. Uh, I mean, I guess there is revenue sharing, but you know what I mean. No I mean, parity there's, schedule. Yeah. There's, 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 there's no reason for them to not remain this way because it's pretty much been built up and calculatedly built up uh, to be this way. And uh, unless college football as a sport changes dramatically, uh, there's no reason to believe that's going to change anytime soon. Yep. Uh, number two. More games against teams fans care about. I mean, I, I, like I, I the SCS thing too, but also maybe it knocks out not to knock the group of five, but some of the group of five games that you wouldn't want to watch either. So, yeah, you get more teams in the region that you care about that you want to see. Uh, you get to see those teams more often as opposed to how would that these hurt guys? and affect those schools that need those games against those teams when they get a million dollars well nothing works out for everybody i know i know you know and i I mean if you're relying on that to to float your athletic budget then that probably is a a warning sign anyways i I mean i i know i know that not everybody can make the money to just 
be above water all the time. But if you're relying on, man, we got to go to LSU and play them to make $2 million to function, then that's problematic that you're in that spot to begin with, in my opinion. Yeah. That you're, that you're relying that heavily on that, that game. But, yeah, it does float other programs, and I don't know how those, those programs will deal with that, but uh, nobody really cares about them. I mean, that's the message that I've been sent over and over by a lot of the moves and decisions being made. Are we suddenly going to start pretending like we care about the smaller schools? Because every move that's been made seems to say otherwise. Well, yeah, I mean, like, why do you all of a sudden care about the SES if you don't care about the Pac-12 or the Big 12 if you're the SEC or Big 10? I mean, like, you're not making moves that are helping out teams that are supposedly on your same level. So If the Big one, 12 would have died off, nobody in the SEC cared. or it wouldn't have cared one bit. So, you know, we're all of a sudden going to care about well, Furman? Yeah, you know, like it's like what uh, Texas uh, when they said, "Hey, what about the other teams left behind?" Okay. Is it screw them? Screw them. Yeah, yeah I care. moved on along, and then yeah. just didn't care if they all just you know packed up shop and were left you know with nothing. They didn't care. They they got what they wanted. So yeah, I'm not going to for a second start to believe that they're all that worried about the smaller schools. Yeah, and number one, it will increase the likelihood of the expanded playoff because look, if the SEC has to play nine games, that means they could. The better teams could lose an extra game, which means that if they do that, then they'll say, well, we need an expanded playoff because we're the best league, and two losses in our league means something different than one loss in another league. So that means that we would have an increased likelihood of that's, an expanded playoff. That's more propaganda, too. Yeah, I know. Our, our two losses only count as everybody else's one. Like, that's – man, they it, really have it, just brainwashed the hell out it, of people. It, it is – I'm just trying to get it done however I can. And so if you have to feed into their propaganda to get that done and get it, get it over with, then, then I'm all for it because that's what they're going to say. There is no so. college football playoff, any, any plan after 2025. So something has to change. And God knows if it will before then. Well, I've been holding on to this 